If you like to make sports hype reels and mixtapes, but you feel slightly limited by your editing skills, you're gonna learn today. Yes, you are, because I'm gonna show you a bunch of tweaks that you can apply to your videos and instantly take them from good enough to epic as f. Hey guys, my name is E. I'm a professional sports videographer, and the purpose of my channel is to give you the knowledge and the tools that you need to create sport videos so awesome that you too one day will be able to work alongside your favorite athletes. Chris is gonna be holding this camera and he's gonna be moving towards you and backwards, and you just sort of keep looking down the barrel as he's doing all the work. Rolling, and action. Perfect. So on that note, let me show you a few tricks that will instantly improve your hype videos. Keep in mind, I'll be using Premiere Pro today, but you can find the same tools, that maybe they'll have a different name, but you can find the same tools and achieve the same results with most of the other editing platforms available out there. My first trick is to use a tool that, in my opinion, is the most underrated tool in video editing. I'm talking about guides, these guides. I use them to tweak and improve the accuracy of my transition effects and my tracking effects. For example, when tracking a football on a throw like this, I use guides to keep the ball in the middle of the frame at all times. The result is a tracking effect extremely smooth and consistent without having to use After Effects at all. To add guides in Premiere Pro, just make sure that your playback window is selected, then click on the View menu and Show Guides. If the guides are not forming a cross in the middle, just go back, hit Clear Guides, and I'll show you how to do it from scratch. Now in the same menu again, hit Add Guide. Change the unit's drop-down menu to Percent, and at Position, type 50. Then do the same thing again, but this time change the orientation from Horizontal to Vertical, or vice versa. If you want, you can change the color of your guides right here, and I suggest using a color that stands out as much as possible from your footage. Now with these guides in place, it's much easier to keep your subject in the middle of your frame when tracking and also when working on transitions like this one. At the moment, the transition is just a basic cut, nothing special about it. But I can easily make this a seamless transition to the point where you won't even see the cut anymore. All that using guides to align the basketball at the end of the first clip with the basketball at the start of the second clip. And to really fine tune it, I can even put one clip over the other, lower its opacity by 50% and then adjust the position and scale perfectly. Once I'm done, I bring the opacity back to normal, put the clip back where it belongs and voila. Another way to make your cuts appear way more seamless is to cut similar actions back to back. We can obviously still see the cuts, but because the action in each clip is so similar, in the viewer's minds it all becomes just one long series of actions instead of several independent ones, if that makes sense. Ah! You can also achieve the same result by having one continuous movement through different clips. For example, in this sequence, it's pretty obvious that this is not one continuous play. But because the flow of the action makes sense, the viewers don't care about the cuts, they're way too busy getting sucked in by the play. When using keyframes, you can tweak them to make the movement or the tracking you're creating in post appear more natural and realistic. There's a bunch of ways to do this, but the simplest one is to use temporal interpolation. Let's say you have two keyframes, one second apart. If you leave everything as is, the speed will stay the same through the entire second, which can look kind of fake and robotic. But if you change the first keyframe to ease out and the last keyframe to ease in, the duration will be the same, but the movement will start slow, accelerate in the middle, and then slow down before the end. Like I said before, much more realistic in most situations. And speaking of realistic, this might be a controversial hot take, but I feel that one of the best way to make your videos feel more real is to use fake sound effects. 
bro, what are you talking about, man? Hear me out, because in real life, we're used to hear certain sounds that come with certain actions. For example, the swish sound of a perfect three-point shot or the impact noise of a great tackle. But if we can't hear those things in your video because the crowd was too loud or your microphone wasn't good enough or whatever the reason may be, from the viewer's perspective, the action feels less real and less intense as well because it's only engaging one of our senses instead of two. So adding sound effects in post will make each action feel more real, more impactful, and if well done, more epic. I will say though, there is one huge mistake that pretty much all sports videographers make when they start using sound effects. I know that because I sell a sound effects pack on my website. It's a pack dedicated to sports videography with over 700 sound effects from the 12 most popular sports in the world. It's very popular with my regular viewers and when I get the chance to watch a video that someone's made with my sound effects for the first time, more often than not, I see the same mistake, which is to set the volume of the sound effects way too high. And I know why it happens. You just bought a sound effects pack, you're excited, you're eager to see how much of a difference they can make in your videos, so you wanna make sure that we hear them. But sound effects are never meant to be the focus of attention. Their only job is to sound as normal as possible. So if something happens far, far away, like this three-point shot, for example, we should barely hear the sound of the ball hitting the net. But on a three-point where I'm zooming in on the ball and watching it go through the net from real close, now I want to hear it like I'm right next to it. So bottom line, sound effects are not the lead actor of your movie, they're the supporting cast. And they're also available on my website beyondthegame.tv through the link in the description below. Another easy tweak you can do to improve your hype reels and your mixtapes is to make each individual clip shorter. Because by the time they're done editing, most people think that all their clips are short enough. But 9 times out of 10, they are not. There's always too much lead in at the start. So what I challenge you to do is, once your rough cut is finished and you're quite happy with it, before you start working on visual effects and sound design, first make a copy of that sequence to make sure you don't regret what you're about to do, and then literally cut out the first two seconds of each clip in your sequence. Then get rid of all the gaps and play your sequence once again. And I guarantee you, you'll be amazed by how dynamic your video has become. For sure there'll be 3 or 4 clips for which it doesn't work and you'll have to go back and fix them, but for the most part your video will be improved and also more likely to go viral on social media because of its new dynamic pace. Speaking of social media, don't be afraid to use the Instagram and TikTok apps to add stickers, effects and trending music tracks to your finished videos. There are a ton of cool things that you can add in those apps that you don't have access to in most editing platforms. So make sure you make the most of it because again, this is a great way to help your videos go viral. At this point, you might be thinking that although these tweaks uh, seem pretty simple individually, when you add them all up, it's still a whole lot of work. So let me give you a couple tips on how to edit faster so that you can get through all the tweaks very easily and much quicker. First of all, this is your best friend and this is your last resort. The more you use your keyboard and the less you use your mouse, the faster you will be. Using your keyboard instead of your mouse is the equivalent of passing the football instead of running with it. That simple. So the best way to maximize your keyboard is to make sure that anything you do quite regularly has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it. For example, for me, if I want to change the speed of a clip, I press Command J. If I want to ease out a keyframe, I press 1. If I want to ease in a keyframe, I press 2. And if I want to see my guides, I press 0. But ultimately, everything I said today is completely irrelevant if you don't know the basics of hype reel video editing. So to learn how to edit an epic hype reel the right way from start to finish, simply watch part one of this video, which is my most popular sports videography video ever. It's fully packed with value. It's the foundation of everything I spoke about today. So make sure you click on the thumbnail on your screen right now. Otherwise, as usual, Thank you for watching, my name is E, and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.